actually give God all honor and praise today. I thank Him for what He's doing in your life and how He's come to your heart, your spirit, and um, your wherever you might be in life, wherever you need Him to meet you. Um, I'm sure He'll be there if you truly allow Him to, to be God in your life on today. Uh, subject today is um, to walk in the spirit so we won't fulfill the lust you know of the flesh which is really important um, my message is really coming from the book of Galatians chapter 5 and there's so many things there on chapter 5 that I believe um, we should actually talk about and um, if you read it for yourself, which is really important. <clears throat> I'm taking the gloves off today. We're going to be one-on-one. Um, I'm actually not going through a lot of scriptures today, though, um, just so we can, you know, have an honest talk about, you know, our spiritual walk with God, which is so important on, <clears throat> you know, on our day-to-day -day life today. Because um, what happens to us as Christians, I've noticed, is that we tend to strengthen our strength, you know, and shove all our weaknesses under the rug. Um, it, hap it even happened in school, like, you know, like a teacher even, um, if they know, for example, we could in math or English, science, certain things, they help us master you know master them and then the ones that we weaken nobody really take the time to teach you or teach you a different way that you can build upon it until you grow and that's where your your strength lies is when you take something that you're not good at and you know and perform and master it and that's what god is looking in the kingdom and that's why when he leaves us the you know, he said, my spirit, I live with you. This is to show you that you can um, walk in the spirit so you can um, cultivate the fruit of the spirit, which is in Galatians 5.22, which we'll talk on. And our parents even, um, you know, help us the same way too. Um, and we always have that crutch. And growing up, sometimes your parent will see that, you know, something which is not even meaningful, but it you know, it can affect you later in life and people don't think that. You could have bad manners on the table or you see a candy, you just put it in your pocket and you go and your parents see it or you go for a friend house, you know, you take um, maybe a cookie or something and then you just shove it in your pocket like you don't even ask for it. But later on, it will develop into something something more because you're gonna see if it was that easy for you to take something then the more you do it the easier it becomes so what then what you know you have developed is you become actually a thief sometimes we want to cover sin and make it pretty and you know and give it a different name so then it's not a sin anymore but if you cultivate if there's like 10 spiritual gifts um like in 522 when we talk about meekness patience, humility, love, and all that. But if you cultivate some of those and leave out three or four, what happens then? It's like when God comes back, um, how is he going to pick you with them? Because you actually lack all those other ones when he says to cultivate all of them. And that's what we're talking about today. And this is really important. Um, like I said, we keep mastering our strength like and one other thing that we do I've noticed that's um, something we should really pay attention to um, when we're in church we we feel like because we're in church we already save because I go to church 10 times a day I go to church every day or <clears throat> I participate I, I do this I do that I do all those other things but then um, you're not really cultivating um, you know the the gift of the spirit that the that Jesus left us, the Holy Spirit that He left in us, He said to lead us and guide us. And what we do, we keep, um, you know, affecting the Holy Spirit that's in us. Every time we do something we're not supposed to do, it's like that light that's in us. You know, it keeps getting dimmer and dimmer until one day you feel like there's no more light in you. And you have to do a lot of soul searching to really, you know, bring that light back. But what if judgment day come when your light is out? 
you know so that's something that you know as uh, christians that's really important for us um we tend to want to judge each other and say that just because you cultivate it um you know you don't you have patience humility or you don't steal you don't lie you don't fornicate you don't commit adultery you don't kill anyone so you feel like you're already perfect so you look at someone else that maybe still lying or stealing or you know like gossiping and you say well i'm not like that person because but maybe that person cultivated other things that you're probably doing under the rug or in secrets or sometimes that you even don't even acknowledge about yourself <laughs> and you're holding on to them you it's like it's hard for you to let something go because there's this crutch that you feel like you need and i'm here to tell you it's time to let go of that sand it's time to let go of that crutch you know in little thing we're still getting so angry and upset all those are sin and we think because we're in church that they're not but they are <laughs> so it's the like um galatians also like i said there's so much in this galatians chapter five um five and nine actually says it's just take a little leaven to leaven the whole lump you know it doesn't take much it takes just a little bit and it actually you know can affect uh, everything and when it affected it can actually destroy your soul it could destroy your spirit and that's why we have to be <coughs> really careful about that and and god is good and that's why you know like i said we we tend to look at each other's flaws and then when we ourselves have like so many that we don't even acknowledge um i would even take uh, an example of myself the other day um something that i realized um ever since i was really young there's something i don't i don't like where it is like when people are talking too loud or getting upset and angry whenever i see that it's like i tend to run away or you know um i just don't be around it but i felt that um when my brother or sister needed me in that moment even though there was this you know thing that i'm really uncomfortable with you know i made myself scarce you know i disappeared but then um i realized in that moment because i took some time to myself to really think um that maybe you know sometimes we ask god for you know for something you say god give me more patience more love more trust more all those things and then um we felt that he gives it to us when everything is good oh i have harmony you know i love my brother and sister but you do when everything is perfect when everything is good when you comfortable and your spirit and when everything is good you feel that yeah oh yeah i'm serving god i'm like the perfect christian but then the real true test come when god give you a test for growth and you know, we keep failing the same test it's because the way we think he's going to give it to us it's not the way he gives it to you and we fail to realize that when we in that moment that's why i love whenever i'm going to a test i try to find out the lesson in the test and we have to do that that way you'll find out and just ask yourself what would jesus do in that moment and then you know it'll be clear to you exactly what maybe it's this patience you have asked them he's trying to teach you in that moment where everything is chaotic when you're staying in prayer and being faithful and true to yourself and true to your calling with christ that you're actually cultivating that patience me not running away is actually showing me that i can i should be there for my brothers i am my brother's keeper you know i am my brothers and sisters keeper and that's the spirit we have to have in christ maybe my brother just needed my shoulder in that moment probably just needed a prayer in that moment but if i feel that it's an uncomfortable place i don't want to be there um so how can god use me you know how can i say that you know i'm preaching and i'm um blessing someone what because you bless with your ties with your offering because you pray for someone once in a while but what about all the other things that <clears throat> that's part of it 
and you neglect just because it's uncomfortable for you. But sometimes we have to get in that place where we're uncomfortable. And that way, that's when you learn and you grow in Christ more. Because the more you grow, the more intimacy you have with Christ, the more Christ-like you are. And if we look at the example of Jesus, he showed us, if we read the scriptures, that um, he's been to places that made a lot of other people uncomfortable. He was even in a crowd where people were like shoving him or just doing stuff, but he was there. You know what I mean? So he didn't say, I'm not going there because they're going to shove me and I could fall anything. But then he was there. He went into people's house that was dirty. He went to people that um, that they deemed to be unclean, that there wasn't worth him coming there but he sat with them and ate with them but other people even judged them and say something they wasn't supposed to say but he said what is he doing he was ministering to them you know he didn't say this make me uncomfortable because other people are judging me or talking to me or about me but he went there not being in his comfortable self but being the Christ that shows love and humility and patience and you know and all the fruit of the spirit that the scriptures tells us about <clears throat> and let's go to galatians um chapter 5 um I, i'll say i read down 16 it says walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to another, so that he cannot do the things that you would. But if he be led by the Spirit, you are not on the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, you know, wrath, strife, um, envying, drunkenness, um, and it's so many things. And it says, if we have all those things, if this is what you're going after, it says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. But verse 22 says, um, but the fruit of the Spirit, that's what we need to cultivate. That's what we, when the Holy Spirit actually, God gave us when we get baptized, He gave us His Spirit to, to dwell on us so we can, you know, to lead us and guide us. But it's there if we just ignore it or we don't want to listen to that inner voice that wants us to do right and we feel that we can't do it you can't do right because a lot of times you feel like it's not necessary or you don't give it any importance if something is not important for you you're not going to do the things that you need to do you're gonna be like just shove it to the side but the Holy Spirit is not to ignore we go to church, but not to just sit there on the pool and just warm them up. We go there because we're seeking for something. We know there's something greater than us. There's a power greater than us that there's a kingdom waiting for us. There's a reward. You do good and you'll get that reward. You do bad, you get that reward. It's the same. When we go to school, we work hard so we can graduate and obtain a diploma but not to keep repeating the same grade over and over again and when we don't actually you know stay with christ and try to learn to be in his presence more allow our spirit to you know dwell there and actually lead us and guide us in the way we should go so we then therefore we're not gonna please god the way we need to please them we cannot go on this walk with them saying something with your lips you know just professing it and actually saying it with your heart and truly that's why a lot of times we pray we pray for change and we say the change never came it's because even though you're praying but you you know it's like your prayer just going up to your roof the roof it it doesn't even go to god because you're holding on to something you know, you're holding on to, it's like I said, that you have a crutch. I see you like you're happy about something. But at the same time, you're like, Jesus, take this lying spirit from me. Oh, I can't do it anymore. But you're just saying it. But when you truly want something, when your soul truly wants something, your spirit, you'll see your prayer is different. You'll see there's a conviction. There's something that comes in you that makes you see that that sin is truly sin and I can't 
keep going at it, Lord. I can't keep smoking. I can't keep lying. I can't keep, you know, fornicating. I can't keep um, doing all those things that I'm doing. I can't keep, you know, saying when everything is good, I love my brother. Then when he does something to me, I don't like, you know, I can't even stand him. I can't even look at him anymore. Um, those are, but then yet you say you have love, you have cultivated love. What love? What, when everything is okay and when you're not uncomfortable, you love? You know, those are the things that, um, that's really important. Don't make it like you have cultivated all the other fruits of the spirit and that one will keep you away from the kingdom of God, from your reward. Because when we actually cultivate all the fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit is not only going to live in us, but it will be all around you, all over you, you know, and it will be on you. And you'll see more God's grace on you, more favor. And wherever you go, you'll be, um, you'll be a blessing to others. You know, you can pray for someone else. And wherever you touch, wherever you go, and it will be a blessing to everyone that's around you. And that's what we're seeking we're seeking that fruit. We're seeking um, that knowledge to actually know ourselves, to know that sometimes we have to let go of something. And why is it that, you know, whatever whatever it is, is making you still holding on to something when you know you have to let it go. Sometimes we have to, you know, be bare with ourselves, really find out, you know, because sometimes we have misplaced anger, we have misplaced judgment. Um, but then always ask yourself, what would Jesus do in that moment? And then you'll see that you'll start to be more Christ-like. And that's what we're seeking in order to see, you know, God's kingdom. And um, Psalm 91, no, actually 51, uh, verse 10, um, with David, I love it when he, um, when he was praying um, to ask God for forgiveness. And God did bless David to taste that Holy Spirit. He didn't, um, not everyone in the Old Testament can actually talk about the Holy Spirit, but David, um, God did bless him to actually, you know, see that and experience that for himself. And he, you know, that's why when we read uh, the book of Psalms, he always talk about it. He always talk. And in verse 10, I love what he says. He said, God, do not, don't take your Holy Spirit from me because that's what guides me. That's what makes me want to walk right, make me want to talk right, make me want to do right. Right. And he knows without the Holy Spirit, his life won't change. His life is not going to be what God is asking for us to be. So remember to not don't grieve the Holy Spirit that's inside of us. You know, keep that light that's in us so that the world can see that light. So you can touch someone. We don't go to church just for ourselves, but we go to bring a soul, like a lost soul to back to God. And that's why God says, you know, he's looking for laborers. He's looking for his children that are lost. And we are in a church to bring those um, lost souls back. And so if we are ourselves, if other people are looking at us and they say, I don't want to be a Christian if I'm going to be like that person over there, it's because you haven't allowed that, you know, the Holy Spirit to make that, to help you change. In order for you to change, you have to be willing to change also. And that's why God, you know, we have to truly know him for ourselves and experience God for ourselves. And like I said, love conquers all because when you have that love, that same love he gives us, you can see that all those things that you do, you'll have more empathy. You'll know that maybe your brother and sister did something because it could be something else is bothering them. Instead of crucifying them or judging them, then pray for them, be there for them, you know. And like I said, love yourself more so you can know Christ's love in you even more. And I thank God for you today always. And I pray that he bless your home. Um, he come and visit you and he truly show you the Holy Spirit that can continue to dwell on you so you can stay in his presence and stay in his house. And that's the most important thing that we can do as Christians that's trying to see God's kingdom one day. May God bless you and we'll talk again next Monday. Amen.